Okay, welcome to this video. It's the second part of our uh, video sequence in which we do the analysis for an excavator lifting a, a buried gas tank. So in the first video we talked about the, the strategy that we'll use to solve it and we got to the point where we had written down the free body diagram for the uh, linkage and then um, I had said that we would uh, start off solving this system by saying the sum of the moments about the point B is equal to zero. Okay, so in order to solve for the sum of the moments about point B, I need a vector that relates B to N and B to A. So I'll have R B N which is Rn minus Rb. I'll have Rba, which is Ra minus Rb. And to get uh, the magnitude of TAC, I'm actually going to need a unit vector in the same direction as TAC. So to get the unit vector, I will um, need an RAC, which is the position of C minus the position of A. And then I'll need a unit vector, lambda AC, which is the magnitude of RAC. Whoops, I got the magnitude in the wrong place. We don't want these guys here. We want them in the denominator. Okay, and once I have these values, then I can compute the moment generated by the weight of the tank and the moment generated by t uh, the tension AC. So rather than compute these on screen, I'm going to compute them. I'll pause the video, compute them, and then just write them down so in a second you should see them appear magically. Okay, if this worked uh, magically, the numbers have appeared. And I'm going to, just to comment about the numbers I'm computing here, uh, I'm rounding everything to just a few digits when I write it down. As I do the computations, I'm actually using a computer program to keep uh, the values that I'm computing out to the precision of the computer. So the numbers you get if you use these values to do computations will not match exactly with the numbers that I'm going to write down because I'm rounding here as I write it down, but as I do the computations, I'm not, doing round, I'm not rounding anything off. Okay, so we got the relative position vectors. Uh, we got... Um, the unit vector in the direction AC, that means that the vector, uh, the force that's actually applied here, is the magnitude times this unit vector. And so I can now say that the, um, the moment about point B will be given by R B N cross Fn, and Fn is this guy, plus Rba cross Tac, and this is equal to the, uh, the sum of the moments at B, so this has to be equal to zero. Okay, and when I do these computations, now this one is easy enough, I'll just write it down. This cross product here uh, turns out to be uh, 48,000 foot-pounds plus TAC times minus 0.814 and this would be feet is equal to zero. And from this I can solve for TAC, and TAC is equal to 5 or 58,000 
983 pounds. Okay. So, by solving for the moments, or the moment, the sum of the moments about B equals zero, we now have TAC. The next thing to do is find FB. And so I'll clean up some space here. Um, to find FB, we'll use the sum of the forces, and these are vectors, is equal to zero. Okay, so the sum of the forces are, we have Fn, this is the weight of the tank, plus TAC, lambda hat AC, plus FB is equal to zero, which means that um, FB is the negative of these guys. And when I solve this, then, I get FB. So when I plug in numbers for FN, TAC, lambda hat AC, and do the math, I get minus 29,023 pounds, I hat, minus 21,349 pounds, J hat. So this is the X component. Uh, you might sometimes see this represented FBX. This is the Y component, FBY. Okay, so I know the forces now uh, on this uh, linkage. And so um, in order to give us a better feel for how this really works, I've actually graphed these forces on the linkage. And if you look carefully, um, this may actually be pretty hard to see, but I tried to make the arrows the length of the arrows fairly close to the magnitude of the forces and be consistent throughout the analysis. And when we get over here, we're going to have some really long arrows. So these guys are small. So we've got the 3,000 pounds here. We've got FB looking like this. It's uh, the force applied by the arm to the linkage is in this direction. The force applied to the linkage by this uh, two joint or uh, yeah, two force member is like this, and uh, the moments and the total force sum to zero. So, pretty exciting, eh? So that gives us um, the uh, analysis at the linkage. The next thing to do is to do the analysis at that joint. So, let me bring that up. Okay, so here we have our picture of the um, all of the components we're analyzing. We want to look at this particular pin right now. So we'll have a tension AC, a tension CD, and a tension CG. So if we go and draw this free body diagram, we've got the pin. We have the tension AC. We have the tension, C, uh, tension CD, and we have the tension CG. Okay. Now, again, because this is a pin, uh, we will only have uh, two equations, and so we can only solve for two unknowns. We know TAC, we don't know TCG and TCD. So that's what, these are the two unknowns we will solve for. So, again, in order to solve for this, I, I know what TAC is. Um, I solved for it in the last uh, free body diagram. But I need to be able to solve for TCG and TCD. That will require um, relative position vectors and from those unit vectors in order to get the directions here. And then um, I will have to uh, write out the equation that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. So I'm going to pause the video again while I do that, and uh, in just a second you'll see all the beautiful results of that. Okay, through the magic of video, um, all, those, all these numbers are computed. So I've got the direction vector for TCG, the direction vector for TCD. And um, if you want to actually reproduce these computations, uh, pause the video and by all means go, go right ahead. It never hurts to check me because I find I tend to make a lot of mistakes doing this stuff. 
Okay, so, although having rechecked this several times, I'm hoping it's right. Okay, so here we'll use the sum of the forces is equal to zero. And um, the forces we have here, the tension here is TAC, which we solve for, but the direction is the opposite of the previous um, uh, free body diagram because uh, we had, uh, you know, in the previous free body diagram, we had a tension here that was pulling this way. Uh, and so the tension here is going to be equal and opposite. So I can write then the force that's actually exerted, if I write this as the force and not just the magnitude of the force, um, this force here will be negative TAC, okay, plus TCG lambda hat CG plus TCD lambda hat CD, and this is equal to zero. And from this equation, um, I can actually write this all out. So I've got all of the components. Uh, I've got the x and y components. I can set all of the x components equal to each other, or all of the x components equal to zero, all of the y components equal to zero. I'll have two equations in these two unknowns. And when I solve those two equations in those two unknowns, I will discover, hopefully, that TCG, this tension here, is 45,898 pounds and TCD is negative 34,027 pounds. Okay, so what this means is that um, uh, the two uh, force member here, which if I recall is just a link, is in compression. Uh, the force, or the two force member here, which if I remember correctly is a hydraulic cylinder, is under tension. So, if I go um, back to my, if I go back to my picture and draw these vectors, I get something that looks like this. Okay, I've drawn the forces on the pin, and again, they seem to be fairly small. Uh, they w are fairly small relative to some of the other forces we'll see. Uh, but you can see that this link is in tension, this hydraulic cylinder is in tension, and this link here is in compression. So, um, in terms of the free bodies that we need to look at, we're halfway done. Stay tuned for part three, where we'll look at the arm and maybe even the boom.